Hey, we're live. We are live. I think we need some intro music or something. Just, no. no. Uh, I'm the boring one. Insurance. <laughs> <laughs> no. You're the boring one? Yeah. No, I don't think so. Continue on. Continuing on here. Okay. Today, we're going to be speaking about our post from yesterday. It's, it's wisdom mm -hmm. for the insightful, for the prophetic. Um, boy, we're... We are stepping into some new things here, not just us personally, but for for the body of Christ at large. We're stepping into a new era, a new time, a new way of doing things, so to speak, but it's not necessarily new. It's God's redefining it for us all. And it's transitional, but not in what we think as humans is transition. Right. We think new, bright, shiny. Yeah, and it all happens in a week. Yeah. And, That's and, fine. Usually a long week, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, we're going to start here and we're going to open up with some standards for being, being in the prophetic. I mean, and it applies to all offices mm -hmm. in the church, of course, but, but in the, for the prophetic realm, because people seem to be drawn to it a little bit more because it's a bit more, can be a bit more sensational and man built that, uh, we, you know, oh, wow, you know, I got a prophetic word from brother, sister, mm -hmm. mouthpiece of the Lord. <laughs> and uh, So Numbers 12, verse 6, and this is the Lord speaking to, to Moses. And he said, hear my words. If there is a prophet among you, I, the Lord, make myself known to him in a vision. I speak with him in a dream. And the Lord will reveal himself. Most of us, if we walk in, an extra dose, if you will, of prophetic anointing. Morning, Sandy. Uh, if if we walk in an extra dose of that, we know we've known about it since we were little. Yes, but I love this verse because it's not exclusive to just people who call themselves prophets. This is anyone. Hear my words. If there's a prophet among you, and I will make myself known to him. And God's not hiding himself from anyone. No. And that's the beautiful part of it is so many people, you know, we were talking about exclusions and groups and cliques and all of those things. And we'll get to that in a minute. We all have that opportunity. Mm -hmm. All. Every one of us do. Mm -hmm. But again, we'll, we will find that, that we've known this since we were very, very young. We didn't quite know what it was, but we knew that we, we, we had, I don't know, in my case, had, had seen angels. We had... I had, you know, heard the voice of the Lord, had had insight since even when you're not even supposed to be conscious about things like that. And for me, it was just people calling it out in me. They're like, you're special. There's something different about you. But I didn't see the angels. I didn't hear the voice of God the way that I thought I should. So right. um, it, everybody's somebody journey tells is different. You different. You were wrong. Everybody's different. And mm -hmm. so this is the exciting part about coming together and just sharing our lives. Yeah. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 15 through 22. This is, and I, this is how I was brought up as far as the standard for, for being a prophet, for the prophetic. Granted, the denomination I grew up in frowned upon prophetic utterances because that died with the apostles. and People just don't understand different. Right. And again, because of sensationalism and you know, the, the power of God coming down, well... All right, enough. And, and some things are hard to explain, and so people just rather not deal with them. Yeah. And so why things like this are great. Yeah. And, and I love how the Lord, the way that this is phrased in the Word, uh, starting in verse 15, and this is the Lord speaking with Moses. The Lord your God will raise up unto you a prophet from the midst of you, of your brethren, like unto me. Unto him you shall hearken. Okay? And... Uh, the book of Deuteronomy is pretty much Moses' swan song of, you know, hey, this is what's going to happen. And Moses spoke so many prophetic utterances that mm -hmm. even today, most of the church isn't picking it up of, of what Moses had spoke. And so when Moses was speaking this, he's, he's basically prophesying the coming Messiah, a prophet like myself. Hence why when Jesus walked the earth, it was, well, Moses said, and Jesus said, yeah, but God says, because man has a way of turning people into idols. Right. And never underestimate man's ability to mess things up. It's true. So anyway, carrying on. Verse 16. According to all that you desire of the Lord your God in Horeb in the day of the assembly, saying, 
Let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God, neither let me see this great fire anymore, that I die not. Moses, you go speak for us. Verse 17, and the Lord said to me, they have well spoken that which they have spoken. I will raise him up a prophet from among their brethren, just like you, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak to them all that I command him. Again, this is Messiah. But now this is where the Lord's getting into about uh, the other offices in the prophetic. And it shall come to pass that whoever will not hearken unto my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. Require it of him. But if the prophet who shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in, in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. Tough charge right there, guys. And if you say in your heart, how shall we know the word of the Lord, which the word of the Lord has not spoken? And here's our standard, straight up, and it hasn't changed in all, in, in all this time of history. When a prophet speaks in the name of the Lord, if the thing follows not or does not come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken, but the prophet has spoken it presumptuously. You shall not be afraid of him. And I always think of Samuel the prophet when I read that passage because when Samuel showed up to Bethlehem to, to anoint David, the first response people said was, you come in peace? Because the prophet carried the weight of the Lord. He was the voice of the Lord. He, he brought... He brought the encouragement, yes, but usually he brought a, vo a word of judgment. Mm -hmm. And it was it was not a happy place for a lot of people. But hence why our prayer is always, Father, let us hear your voice clear and louder than any other voice. Another voice we will not follow. Amen. But speak when spoken through, otherwise we keep our mouth shut. Amen. Uh, and we love, to, we love to quote this one in our day and time. For the Lord, and it's from Amos 3.7, for the Lord does nothing without revealing his secret to his servants of prophets. And it's true. And each one of us can hear the word of the Lord. Each one of us can prophesy. Each one of us can hear what God is saying. But one thing that, that God is, is telling Jaron and I right now is, okay, I've, I've spoken through you. I've spoken through others. People's dreams are coming, are going to be coming to pass. A lot of people's dreams are going to be revisited. In other words, all right, and I'll use me as an example. When I was younger, I had the I literally had the world by the tail, and and man, I followed God, I loved God, and did everything the best of my knowledge and ability. And everything, almost everything you touch is golden. And you know, man, this this feels really good. This is how it's supposed to be, and that causes a sense of of being naive about a lot of things because you don't know or you're not experiencing the harshness that others have. Well, in a, in a moment of hey, Marilee. self or weakness, call it what you want, uh, I stepped in some major obedience to the Lord. Disobedience. Yeah, excuse me, disobedience. Yeah, dyslexic moment, I guess. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and, it, and it was hard. And I had to walk through the results of that disobedience for a lot of years. And finally, at this stage of life, we have come to that place of, you know what? Every one of those ghosts has been slain. Every one of those giants has been subdued. Everything has been buried and put to rest mm -hmm. or burned. And the Lord's going, he's, he's speaking to Jerry and I both. Do you remember when you were little? And you dreamed about this? Yeah, I'm bringing it. Remember when you laid the plan out for this? Yes, sir, I'm bringing it. And that's why as, as prophetic voices, we have to be so on our game 24-7. Yeah. I mean, do we get to relax? Well, sure. But, but as far as dealing with the lives of people and, and speaking these words to people, it's a hard thing. And I have found the more that we go along in this, and this has you know, been a 50 plus year journey. But the more you go along in this, I mean, it, when people come to you for, for, you know, hey, do you have a word from the Lord for me on something? And man, you're ready in season and out. And, and you say, okay, yeah, it, tell me if I'm correct. It, the Lord is telling you dot, 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 dot. And hi, Marilee. And, 
and they say, yeah, yeah, that's, that's exactly it. Okay, hallelujah. But, but it gets harder and harder because those prophetic insights are becoming a lot more intense and they're becoming more specific. And, and now in our case, the Lord is putting timelines on things for us and for people. And it's like, man, Father, I'm flying by the seat of my pants here. And the Lord says, don't worry, I got a hold of your pants. <laughs> Not to worry because you're hearing me. And so when those things do come to pass, you're happy. Yeah, you know, the, the thing that I wanted happened. But more importantly, I heard the voice of God and I spoke it. Mm -hmm. And and that's that's that joy in it. And you have anything to add to that? Well, I don't want to get ahead of you, so no, keep okay. Going. And 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 the one thing I want to stress that we want to stress more than than anything is the integral part of walking in this office mm -hmm. and in, and walking in all the offices, of course. But we're speaking specifically about about those with insight and, and speak prophetically. We must show patience to everyone. Those who we speak to, those we do not speak to. Our level, our patience level better be up there with the Lord's. Mm -hmm. Hey, Emery. And anyway, we'll get we'll get into that in a minute. Uh, our under, the understanding of people where they're at. Do not let a judgmental critical spirit come upon you. Amen. In in what God is speaking. And and, and for those of us who are seers, especially. Do not judge what you see. You, it's okay to judge the fruit because that opens the door. Hi, Beth. That opens the door for you to pray for them. It's like I was telling you, the job I'm working right now, whew, you, you hear and see it all. And But now I have, and not that God, you know, well, I put you there for this, but I have a, but that's not it. I have a new heart for the lost. And I have a renewed, renewed vigor to see people get to where God wants them to go. Mm -hmm. uh, this is this is one that hits really home with me. Do not crash people's dreams. Do not step on the insights the Lord has given them. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, folks, when we do that, when when somebody comes up and you know, using say Jaren as an example, hey, this is what the Lord showed me in my dreams last night. And the Lord showed me this, and the Lord spoke this to me, and me as as Captain Mentor here saying, "Well, that's good, but I think what God was telling you was this: I just stepped all over the insight. Hey, Lamuel, I just stepped all over the insight that the Lord gave her. I'm going to be held to a higher accountability of that. And I'm sorry, I get passionate about those things. And why I get passionate about it is because you just told the person they didn't hear from God. Mm -hmm. And so you're now making them question, am I hearing from God? Is that whose voice am I following if that's not God's voice? And so we do have to be so cautious and attentive to only speak when the Lord tells us to speak and not throw our opinions, even though it may be our or opinion our experiences or our experiences or our perceptions or our understanding, but go, God, what do you need me to say here? Because you're literally shaping how they think they hear from God. Mm -hmm with comments like that. And so it's yeah. it's just yes, being a being intentional yeah. with everything the Father's <clears throat> doing in me. and through you and seasons and transitions and all of and just a, life. And again for others mm -hmm. because we we're not doing we don't we don't operate in this office on behalf of ourselves. Mm -hmm. We do it on behalf of others on of, of the body of Christ. All we are is a mouthpiece. You know what God can get a monkey, oh yeah, or a donkey to speak for him. And so, segueing into our next deal, losing the arrogance. We have no right to be arrogant just because mm -hmm. we hear the voice of the Lord or we speak the voice of the Lord to people or speak to people about things. And the more confident we are that we hear the voice of the Lord, the more compassionate it should make us. That's right. And, and if we come in saying, I'm Brother Prophet. Mm -hmm. mm -mm -mm. No, 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 no. Because we do not have a corner on the spiritual market. Mm -hmm. None of us do. And I don't care who we are, from the, from the greatest to the least. Jesus said, whoever wants to be great, mm -hmm. be a servant. You got it. Yes, and humble, mm -hmm. Miss Beth. Uh, because we are no better than the, than the other gifts. Mm -hmm. We're no better than the pastors who, in my opinion, take the hardest beating of all. Because they're in the pits day in and day out. 
with, with, with people. Yeah, with people, with lives. Yeah, the evangelist, he can come in, throw a grenade, and the pastor yeah. has to clean it up. <laughs> but, um, but this, and I kind of hit on it a little bit ago, is this this new era we're entering mm -hmm. is realistically it's it's a it's a redefined uh of what has been before us okay we back up to the the original day of pentecost and man the outpouring that was there and the residue that came mm -hmm. from that when ananias and sapphira you know thought they'd keep a little bit back. And there was nothing wrong with them keeping... Hi, Linda. Hi, Linda. There was nothing wrong with them keeping, holding back what they got from the land. But but they came up in a big, apparently in a big show and said, this is what we got for the land we sold and we hand it to the church. Well, Peter, boom, insight. Is this really what you got? Oh, yeah, it's all of it. Mm, boom. Uh, guys, get this body out of here, please. It's causing a disruption. But so much of it is just because the hearts weren't fully submitted to God and their hearts mm -hmm. led them astray thinking yeah. that if I give everything God's not going to take care of me right and you know why did that happen then and, and it doesn't happen today I don't know and I can't answer that and I don't mm -hmm. think anybody truly can yeah. the best insight I've heard is uh is from another pastor who said look if that was residue from when that when that happened uh, but we're seeing the apostolic redefined, straight up. And it's a fun day. Um, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 through 17. All scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be competent, equipped for every good work. Amen. And... Okay, in the denomination that I grew up in, Jaron grew up in, uh, it's the, I, for whatever reason there was that thing that that you know that everything ended with with the death of John the Apostle. That yeah, God does move ever so often, but but it's not like it was. And all we all we all we are to use is the Bible. And we just talked about this a minute ago in the green room. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> okay, but. If, if you're all word and no spirit, you'll dry up. But if you're all spirit and no word, you're going to blow up. Mm -hmm. Spirit of Goofy is going to consume you so badly that you're going to explode and you're no good to anybody. And I love the word equipped because so many times we just want to go into the armory, get what we need and leave without the training of what, of how to use what we just went in and got. And right. everything is available to us that we need Everything is available to us that we need, but equipped means time, mm -hmm. and it means training, and it means transition, and it's all of those hard spaces that stretch you and grow you, but in those hard spaces is where you learn to hear the voice of God so clearly and loudly that nothing can change that. It's in those times of stretching that you learn to trust His ways so that you can walk in those impossibles and so that you can walk mm -hmm. where he has called you to walk where you've never been before. But if you aren't solidified in his ways, you'll never reach that more that you know exists. If you mm -hmm. aren't solidified, like I know I hear the voice of God, you, there will be a training that comes up. There will be time. There will be stretching so that you can go, you know what, on the other side of this, I know I'm going to grow in hearing the voice of God. I know I'm going to grow in understanding his ways. So therefore, when I get into the impossible, therefore, when I get into the new, that it is a, that it is a time of, okay, God, I know that I hear your voice. Mm -hmm. So you just guide me to the right, to the left, keep me on right. the straight and narrow. And it's not a matter of right and wrong as much as it is of getting through the journey to get to where he's called you to be. Mm -hmm. And part of that, where he's called you to be is the journey. Right. You and you had mentioned time. And again, this this has been a lifetime journey for mm -hmm. me. And for hey, you. Sarah. And um, it's <laughs> I, I've been so fortunate, and I've been God's hand's been on me because mm -hmm. I've been able to sit with some some great men and women who raised me up. I made some really boneheaded mistakes along the way, really stupid mistakes. 
and disobedience mistakes, but yet God in all his grace and all his love has said, come on, come on, when, when we get through this and you're gonna have to deal with those things you did because uh, the waves of yesterday's sin will wash up on the shore for a season, but once we get through that season, this mm -hmm. is where I'm taking you and this is what I'm gonna do with you. And, and, it, and there's nothing, nothing, hi Sarah, there's nothing wrong with, uh, with, with um, how do I say it? There's nothing fully wrong with making a mistake so long as you quick, or you are quick to repent, but be prepared to have to, to wait a little bit. I'll circle that mountain again because mm -hmm. there's things that you've got to pick back up that if you don't have could destroy you later. Yeah. You have to recognize what, what caused you to make that boneheaded mm -hmm. decision. And so much of my journey was life and other people that I didn't have control over. Mm -hmm. I mean, I did make some choices and decisions I should not have made, but life has so beat me down and stolen so much from me. And it, they weren't my choices. They weren't my decisions. It was just something that I was a part of. Yeah. Um, it was um, people I was connected to that changed my life forever. But at the same time, it's one of those, okay, what is true and what is real. Yeah. That God is good, I can hear his voice, and I will trust in his ways. And that's what my journey the last 20 something years has been all about. Yeah. Solidifying that moment. <laughs> well, you mean I can't just go to a couple seminars and conferences and that no. makes me, there's no easy I, way. I'm equipped. I mean, no. I, hey, I went and heard from no. brother, sister, video prophet. And no. I mean, I, I seen them in person. They even spoke over me. And they laid hands on you too. <laughs> And but, I went out. <laughs> but here's the thing. Just examples, guys. <laughs> it's the time. It's the time in relationship. It's the time in the journey. It's the time God, where God is developing you and every circumstance, situation, circumstance and situation around you. He's developing you to equip you to help see where others are at. Have compassion and go, you know what? I was there. I can show you the path that God showed me to walk out of this. Yeah. There is another side. This is not your forever. Amen. Amen. Specifically, let's walk in integrity, folks, family. Yes. Uh, and everybody that's watching with us right now, uh, we all do. And uh, accountability mm -hmm. to God and one another. Hallelujah. I have Jaren as my accountability partner. Because have you. Yeah, because I've submitted myself to her in a way that, you know what, if you have to whack me across the head with something short of caving my skull in, <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I need. I'm a guy. I mean, a horse trainer buddy of ours said, boys, understand one thing. you got to box their mirrors and get their attention. <laughs> and, uh, and so... Figurative sense. In a figurative sense, yes. not in a literal. Yes. Okay, let us be specific there. But we must, but we also need to seek counsel with one another. Amen. And that's that part of the accountability and integrity. Because if we all of a sudden become an island to ourselves, or, or we mm, self call or proclaim ourselves to be in the prophetic, let's be careful with that. Well, I, I talked with so and so. And again, I went, to, I went to some conferences and they said that I'm a prophet. And. Yeah, but who who are you sitting under right now? God, Jesus. <laughs> well, we all need people. And we have to have people. And we do, and we have to the have current the current thing is community. And but. we have to have those people in we're in our lives in those specific seasons that we're in so that we know we're not alone. Mm -hmm. And that life is hard. Select group of men and women that we can go to in a secret place and say, Look, this is where I'm at right now. Mm -hmm. What what do you say, Lord, about this? Yep. Yeah. That is our neighbor's dryer, if you can hear that. Just heads up. Yeah. I think they wash blankets every day. <laughs> <laughs> but to wrap her up here, uh, and, and, I, and I hit on it earlier, the more, the more that we're doing this, the more it, be, it does become natural uh, because you're ready in season and out. You are, you're studied up, so to speak. You're prayed up. You spend your time with the Lord. Mm -hmm. And that says... Father, what have your perfect work? Perfect that which concerns me. What would you have me to do today? And and the Lord will ask you, what do you want me to do for you today? Mm -hmm. What? And but 
that transition in that in that relationship becomes more natural. But it, but on the flip side of that, and to balance that out a little bit more, as the power that 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 operates through us increases. Mm-hmm. Oh boy, I mean, and it's and and the intensity of the word increases, and again, the specifics, the timelines, and mm-hmm. things that the Lord has you speak to people. Boy, I mean, it's it's scary, and and I've and I've told the Lord a lot lately. I don't want to do this. I don't want to speak that. And he's, I'm not asking you what you want to do. This is what I need you to do. Mm-hmm. Yes, sir. But do not. And this is always our prayer. Do not let me step out there. Do not let me. Do not let me say anything. Do not let me write anything unless your hands on it, because people's lives are at stake. And if there's anything in me that is not supposed to be in me, get it out. Mm-hmm. And um, can I share just for a smidge about our journey when we were in Colorado? Sure. Um, for those that don't know, our journey when we were in Colorado um, was one of the best decisions we ever made. And there are some amazing things that completely changed our life for forever. But it was also probably the hardest season of our marriage. We, oh, yeah. A prophetic friend of ours had spoken into our lives before we went up there. And he said, you need to understand that your marriage will be tested when you get to Colorado. And in that testing, um, what you walk away with is your choice. But if you want to walk away with your marriage, then you need to hold each other close. You mm-hmm. need to stay face to face. You need to choose what you're going to fight for. And when the other, when your spouse doesn't know what to fight for or doesn't know how to, how to see out of the darkness that they're in, then you better fight for them if you want to walk out of here with your marriage. Mm-hmm. And so with, um, with that, it was a hard season. I mean, that 12 months we were there, it was some of the hardest things that in a marriage we've ever done. It's the best of times and the worst of times. Amen to that. <laughs> but here's what I walked away with. I walked away within that season of knowing that I hear the voice of God. I walked away in yeah. that season, me personally, knowing how I can trust God because I saw the prophetic word at the beginning. I This is... God gave us, this is how you're going to walk it out. But we had the choice. Are we going to do the hard thing? Or are we going to take the easy road? And um, one of the things that God spoke to us about a year prior was living limitless. And in that living limitless, you can't do it on your own accord. And so this was the first time we had been challenged to the point of, God, we can't do this. God, we can't do this. We don't know how to do this. And God had just started sweetly whispering to us of limitless is walking with the God of the impossible. Mm -hmm. So in this limitless, you're going to have to learn new things. You're going to have to do the hard things. Um, And knowing that there was more, knowing that there was more on the other side of it, and knowing we had desired the more, this for us was such a pivotal point. Mm -hmm. But we found the more. And because we walked out of that season, it was knowing, it would know that we know that we know we can hear the voice of God. Amen. And we know that we can trust his way. So now we're both in seasons of impossible to our physical bodies and to what we can do. Ooh, yes. But here's the thing, we hear the voice of God and that's what's keeping us there because God has said, this is where I need you to be. And this hallelujah, is, there's been short timelines <laughs> placed and, and, on these things. And this is why I need you to be there. But he's teaching us how to live limitless. He's teaching us how to live in that new and how to trust him. You hear my voice, therefore you're not wavering in what I've... God, is this you? Is this not you? Why is this so hard? So in the hard times, because we knew this is what God said, we can stand. Mm-hmm. And in the hard Amen. times, we can do those things because we trust his ways. And God's like, I'm like, God, what about this? And God says, don't you think I've already taken care of that? Do you think I'm going to compromise your integrity and your character by doing something that I've called you to do? And I'm like, no. And so he has really, truly taught us because of the two things of hearing his voice and trusting his ways that we know we can go where we've never gone before. Mm -hmm. And and that's included in the prophetic. Amen. And so it's exciting. Yeah, it's our time there. I would not trade it for anything. Mm -mm. It was, it was glorious in every way, but you got to see a part of hell that you'd never seen in your life before, and and that was that was the hard part. But yet, coming out of all that, and and I wouldn't, 
I wouldn't, I wouldn't trade it for anything. Mm -hmm. Even going through God's forge, I wouldn't trade it through anything for anything. But coming from that, I know, you know what? There's not a thing, nothing. If Amen. God says, go do it. Amen. He's got it and we're going to do it. And that is part of that training, that equipping and that missing piece that so many people are not willing to walk through. So we want to challenge you today not to run from the hard things, mm -hmm. especially in the prophetic in hearing the voice of God, communing with him, trusting his ways. And all of the things that you have talked about today, of the integrity and the accountability, all of those things come with that time element that we spent so much time talking mm -hmm. about. Yeah, and I know, and I know some people won't agree with anything that we've said, and that's fine. But I, I just want to re reinforce as we step into mm -hmm. this era of the apostolic and the prophetic apostolic, the the te the apostolic teacher, the apostolic pastor, the ap you know, and, and all those things. Uh, one of the one of the greatest things, uh, greatest teachings we ever heard was from somebody nobody's heard of, but but he taught it in such a way of you know the offices you know okay we have you know we have the the pastor we have the teacher we have the evangelist we have the prophet you know and they're all part all part of the hand mm -hmm. it's the apostle that holds them all together and as 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 we step into every every facet of being apostolic in other words the power of the Holy Spirit unleashed mm -hmm. and hallelujah for it. So let's be prepared. Let's, let's be loving. Let's be patient. Let's be all those things God wants us to be because family, our best days are right here in front of us and we're stepping across that threshold into it. And is it going to be la la land? No. Because, but you go back to the, you go back to the, some of the more miraculous things in the word. Okay. If nothing else, go back to the time of Jesus when he walked the earth and was performing miracles and was doing all those things, changing, changing history for eternity. It was in a small country under Roman occupation. Meditate that for a little bit. What makes us think that anything has changed from that? Uh, King Jehu, I love, I love King Jehu. He's one of my heroes. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about, I was talking about him this morning and I use him as an example because Jehu brought righteousness back to the, back to the land. Problem is Jehu did not complete his task. And as, as one of my heroes, if you will, I want to make sure that I complete everything God wants me to do. If I'm, if I'm tearing down the altars to false gods, I'm going to tear them all down. If I'm destroying the works of, of, of my enemies, I'm going to do it. I'm going to destroy all of them that hinder those that are around me. And so that's that accountability part. And so we good? Mm -hmm. Thank you all for your time and, and, and for your love. I mean, this, this means a lot to us when, when people view, we don't get any monetary compensation or any of that. And, you know, we're open anytime to, to speak to whomever uh, as schedules allow. Mm -hmm. And for you to speak back to us. Mm -hmm. so. yeah, we enjoy input. So, may the Lord grant to you everything that he has placed in your heart. Amen. Not only to, to accomplish, but to accomplish to its fullest. And may, may new visions May fresh dreams, may, may the Lord just wrap himself around you. And during, during our, our, our season of his visitation, may it bring about a peace that, and an insight that, that you've never known before. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. And may the Lord's face shine upon you and he be gracious to you. Lord, lift up his countenance upon you and bring you peace. Mm -hmm. And as his own, you are blessed. Yes. And may the grace of the Lord Jesus, the love of the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all. And in Jesus' name, amen. So until we meet again, family, love you. Many, many blessings and prosperous abundance to you all. Okay. All right. Y'all have a great week. Thank you. <laughs>